Believe it or not, there are laws related to playing video games, fantasy sports, virtual reality, and other online games. As the popularity of online gaming continues to grow, so too have the legal issues that loom over them. Hi, I'm Mark Rabowski. I'm a lawyer and professor, and in this brief video lecture, I will cover some of the key legal issues surrounding video games, esports, fantasy sports, online casinos, prediction markets, and AR and VR. First, let's tackle internet gambling. When it comes to internet gambling, both online casinos and sports betting online, federal laws in the United States are murky. As with offline gambling, states maintain the most control over determining which activities constitute illegal gambling online. In 2019, the United States Department of Justice proclaimed that the Interstate Wire Act of 1961, which prohibits people from making bets or wagers over the phone, also applies to all internet gambling that involves interstate transactions. Under the new policy, individual states are permitted to legalize internet gambling, but the gambling itself must occur within state lines. As of 2020, only New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Nevada, and Delaware offer online casinos such as playing online poker for money, and it's only available for in-state residents. Betting on professional and college sports was formerly banned in most states by federal law, but that law was found unconstitutional by the U.S. Supreme Court in 2018. So now New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Nevada, Indiana, West Virginia, Iowa, New Hampshire, Oregon, and Rhode Island allow in-state online sports betting on the outcomes of college and professional sports games via the internet. In order to participate in internet gambling, users must be physically within the state where the online casino is based in order to play. Thus, Texans and Californians, for example, cannot utilize online casinos since the state does not allow them and federal law restricts Americans from using online casinos located outside the state. The minimum age to participate ranges from 18 to 21, with most states requiring you be 21 years old. While sports and casino games aren't the only thing netizens bet on, a number of websites have popped up in recent years, allowing people to bet on the occurrence of future events, such as who will win the next election. A prominent example is predicted.org, which was founded in 2014 and offers prediction exchanges on political and financial events. While prediction markets have some elements of gambling, they are permitted to operate in the United States via a legal loophole offered through the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, or CFTC, which is the regulatory body responsible for overseeing future markets. The exception is typically limited to nonprofit operations that only allow small bets and share their data for academic research. Now let's discuss the laws of fantasy sports. A fantasy sport is a game where participants act as owners to build a team that competes against other fantasy owners based on the statistics generated by the real individual players or teams of a professional sport. Today, America's fantasy sports industry attracts more than 40 million participants and is estimated to generate billions of dollars. Some participants wager tens of thousands of dollars on a single contest, and some fantasy leagues offer million dollar payouts, which has caused concern among anti-gambling groups, prompting calls for more stringent regulation. While some critics consider any game that involves the exchange of money a form of gambling that should be outlawed, it is generally legal to operate and participate in fantasy sports games in the United States. Most fantasy sports games are by law not considered to be a form of gambling. That's because fantasy sports contests, unlike other forms of gambling, are considered to require more skill to win. For example, when you play fantasy sports, you have to choose players. But when you play card games, even though there might be some skill involved, there's also a lot of luck. For example, cards could you don't know which cards are going to be uh, randomly drawn. That said, there are a handful of states that prohibit pay-for-play fantasy games. Next up is video games. The possible link between violence and computer games 
and the rising trend of antisocial behavior in society has prompted calls for regulation of the video game industry. In some cases, children have committed grisly murders and blamed it on video games. However, U.S. courts have not been persuaded by such claims and have repeatedly refused to hold video game companies liable for harm allegedly caused either directly or indirectly by their games. Several U.S. cities and states passed laws banning the sale of violent or sexually explicit video games to children without parental supervision. But federal courts have repeatedly struck down such laws, and in a landmark 2011 decision by the U.S. Supreme Court, it ruled that such laws are unconstitutional because violent video games are protected by the First Amendment. Thus, there is no law in the United States against the sale of violent video games to children. This report from CBS Evening News explains the Supreme Court's decision. Violent or not, video games are free speech. That was the majority's conclusion today. This country has no tradition of specially restricting children's access to depictions of violence, wrote Justice Antonin Scalia. He and four other justices called research linking video games like this to increased violence in children not compelling and indistinguishable from effects produced by other media like books or Saturday morning cartoons. This decision was not in the best interest of parents, no question. James Steyer runs Common Sense Media, which rates the content of games and videos. He helped to craft the California law, which would have banned kids from buying games that depict killing, maiming, dismembering, or sexually assaulting an image of a human being. I think it's naive to suggest that the video games are just the same as a book. I don't think that they have the same impact on people, because one is an interactive game where you can repeatedly do the act you know, hundreds if not thousands of times. The decision was a victory for the video game industry, which argued that parents, not the state, should restrict what children buy. Bo Anderson is CEO of the Entertainment Merchants Association, an umbrella group for the video industry. The government should not be deciding what content is good or not good. An area related to video games is esports. Esports is the playing and watching of competitive video games, and it has grown fast. The global esports market is about $2 billion, and some esports tournaments award tens of millions of dollars in prizes. Esports fundamentals are similar to traditional sports. In esports, skilled players compete against each other in live events, supported by passionate spectator fans and sponsors. As esports continues to grow, so too have the legal issues that loom over it. One issue is, are esports even a true sport? This matters because there is a substantial body of law governing traditional sports, but it is yet to be established how much of this law will or should apply to esports. <clears throat> so the laws surrounding esports are very nascent. While some policies exist, many issues remain unclear or unregulated. The situation is further complicated by the global nature of esports competitions and the lack of a central governing body, such as soccer's FIFA or football's NFL, which can create uncertainty over whose regulations apply. Until there is a central governing body, we probably won't see esports in the Olympics. Meanwhile, some colleges are now starting to offer scholarships for students to play on their esports teams, which raises the issue of how much oversight the NCAA should have. So far, the NCAA has wanted no part of it but given that esports are growing in revenues and popularity, that could change. Another big problem facing esports is demographics. Because many top players are legally minors, they may lack the sophistication necessary to deal with the myriad legal issues that arise. Finally, let's discuss virtual reality and augmented reality, otherwise known as VR and AR. Augmented reality adds fictional elements to on-screen depictions of real-world scenes. Virtual reality creates entirely fictional worlds. Both are commonly used in gaming. As these technologies become more utilized, legal questions are emerging that could trip up developers and users alike. As VR becomes increasingly real, how do we decide what behavior crosses the line from an annoyance to a crime? For example, some players have reported being virtually sexually assaulted in virtual reality games. Currently, there are no laws that say sexual assault in VR is the same as being sexually assaulted in the real world.
But legal experts predict that it's inevitable that a lawsuit involving a virtual groping is going to reach the courts someday soon. Augmented reality has already encountered legal troubles. Pokemon Go, a wildly popular smartphone app that uses augmented reality, became the subject of a class action lawsuit in 2016. Makers of the game, which uses location tracking and mapping technology to create an augmented reality where users catch and train animated animals in real locations, were sued for trespass for causing players to congregate on lawns of private homes. As part of the 2019 settlement of the case, game crea creator Niantic agreed to pay 12 homeowners $1,000 apiece remove Pokemon gyms near homes, and create a system for resolving nuisance complaints, among other measures. Pokemon Go's record-setting success brought a range of other problems. Distracted players were robbed at gunpoint while walking around in search of items, a driver crashed into a police car while distracted by Pokemon, and two players even walked off a 90-foot cliff while playing the game. Fortunately, they, they did not perish. Uh, in those cases, legal experts say the game maker is not responsible for injuries because they warn users of the potential dangers. In addition, as part of Pokemon Go's terms of service, a player agrees to settle any disagreement with Niantic through arbitration, not through trial by jury. Beyond these key legal issues we just discussed, which are somewhat unique to gaming, there are a host of other red flags that may arise related to digital games. But these other issues are issues that all industries must worry about, such as intellectual property, defamation, and cybercrimes. For example, video game characters are sometimes based on real life people. Madden Football uses actual NFL players as characters in its game. But if you do that, you need to get permission from the people whose likeness you're using. Electronic Arts learned this the tough way. In 2013, they had to pay $40 million to college athletes to settle a lawsuit alleging that the company's sports video games use the players' likenesses without permission or compensation. On a closing note, keep in mind that the laws I covered in this video only pertain to the United States. Other countries have different roles and sometimes their laws are more strict. For example, freedom of speech does not exist in many countries, and they have banned certain video games. Other countries, such as South Korea and China, have also put limitations on how much time children can spend playing video games out of concern that they might become addicted. The World Health Organization in 2019 characterized video game addiction as a mental disorder so we'll probably see more countries looking to restrict how often video games, how often kids can play them as a result. Well, that's the law of digital gaming in a nutshell. Once again, I'm Professor Grabowski, and thanks for watching.